Hey everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of Signed by Bass Checkers. Today we're going to discuss how to design a cool break. As an example, I took a new track together with Respawn called Outlaw. Let's dig in. As you can see, I already opened the track. And um, yeah, I'm going to explain a lot about it. Um, let's first start out with uh, this. These are all consolidated tracks of these midis. Um, I usually consolidate them to save up CPU. It's a good tip. I think uh, I read a, a lot about CPU problems and they're real. Yeah, I have them too. And this is the best way to deal with those problems. Now let's go into the track itself. I started out with a melody. Oh, but it's not showing. I'm gonna go through it real quick. It's a plug from the silent. I have a filter on there, delay, reverb, and yeah, just a little dip over there. Nothing that special. It sounds really cool though, and I love the melody. It's kind of spooky. Furthermore, uh, when I play this without the melody, You can hear there's a lot going on without the melody. It's all to build suspense and give it some um, yeah, reference or just a vibe, you know. Uh, it's important for a break. If you would only have the melody, it sounds cool, but it misses uh, layers, misses depth. So what I did is this crackle, the clock. Oh, that's the... All these elements together define the start of the break. And you gotta remember, before this, like in this place, was the last part of the drop. So this is actually the break in the middle of the track. Then we get to the second part of the break, right here, and you can see elements are added like these lows, which is this one. And that's actually this one. This one here is a hoovery sound. Some chords are added, these ones. On top of the already existing melody, and all the other elements which are in this part, like. And makes up like this together. You can notice uh, we have these pitch bands here, which do their work on uh, this one and uh, this one, maybe even this one. Yeah, well Ralph, you gotta turn them on. Okay. Gives these cool effects and makes it more dynamic or real actually. Because when you play an instrument and let's say a guitar, you always, do, you always have to get to the notes. And these pitch bands, it's not the same uh, actually, but it gives more like this yeah, dynamic living. It makes it more, uh, a little bit less uh, generic, so to speak. Um, of course, here's the crackle still, and um, what's also cool was something else. Oh yeah, no, it's not pretty, uh, not that cool. I have a kick always here. Uh, 
And there again, and these are the volume automations for just sidechaining on that kick. And these actually also sidechain on the clap. Um, they're all linked to several of the synths. Um, and it all works up to this part right here, the big part, and we can have a listen. And even more elements are added. Let's have a listen. This one is the main one. Okay, as you can see, there are a lot of synths here playing. They're all here. It's Nexus, Silent, all combined. Uh, I'm not going to dig into the to uh, how they sound or what the presets are. Um, but um, yeah, I'm doing several of the effects, and they all come. You can see them all being linked here to this channel right here, where we do some. Um, boosting um, this for uh, the part where it gets a little bit bigger. Some compression and it all makes up for this sound together. Why do I link them all? I, I like it all in one bus and here you can uh, adjust all the separate volumes. And I always like to compress them into one another. It just makes it a bit more sound like one uh, sound. I also have this vocal effect here, it's made from the uh, cashmere thing. It's just this thing, uh, here it's on plus 400, it usually starts out like this. And with these pitch adjustments uh, I made all separate notes here. Um, And it plays this uh, scheme right there, and I think it sounds really cool. Uh, it's it's a cool thing to use uh, vocal as such a layer. And if you leave it out, for instance, you have this whole thing here. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey. really needs to be there. Even though you have so much noise already going on, it fills up this something higher in the spectrum of the EQ, which is really cool and sounds sharp and kind of adds emotion as well. Then we get to the builder part and you can see me here consolidate this part right here. We can... it's this. And what you hear is actually this. For those who don't know how to consolidate, just select them. Oh, you should actually select the length as well here and then select what you want to consolidate. Tools, consolidate, selection start and then you can have this. I always turn on dithering or dithering, dithering. Uh, makes the quality just slightly better. Not sure if you really hear it, but hey, every piece of quality is uh, nice to have. Oh, I didn't turn on the master effects, but whatever. Now we have this. And it's exactly the same as this. But then it's wave and it won't uh, take up so much CPU anymore. Uh, then we have this alarm, it's kind of a big theme in the track. We start out with the intro as well and it's this, yeah, it sounds cool. Uh, I like alarms. Uh, here something is consolidated as well, I think it's the sign. And it's pitching up there until the end. Uh, yeah, the track is in triplet, so instead of uh, doing a normal uh, snare uh, building up. Um, 
This is all in triplet, which you can hear. And that's the lead. I actually want to have this right here, the drop. Let's have a listen uh, uh, to the whole thing. Ah, see, that happens when you use MIDI and it won't happen when you use WAVE. Okay, so there we drop. Um, the structure here, the design of the break is uh, we get into the break and then it starts out really mellow. Uh, not a lot of low is added there and it's just uh, setting a kind of an ambience. Then here we're gonna add some character. We have the lows uh, come in of the hoover and the sign. Here comes the chord uh, which is played and then here we go all out. This is like the ensemble of everything. And then obviously we have to go work towards the break and uh, we do that by making this big ass build up. And that's always a hard part. Sometimes I only use 8 bars for a build up, sometimes 16. Um, I always tend to make the second break uh, or the second build up of the track. Uh, a little bit bigger than the first one because we already know the drop and it's not going to surprise you as much uh, now as it did before. So we got to take it up just a notch so we can yeah, make the excitement so huge that the drop will have its effect again. It's all a relative thing. Um, the bigger this goes, the harder this will drop or sometimes when this is so cool and it will just surprise you by just coming in there all of a sudden. Um, yeah, you can just play around with it. Um, furthermore, some cool stuff now, I just added some swooshes which I just grabbed from um, several uh, sample packs or respawn did. Uh, we both use uh, FL Studio so it was real easy to collab with him. He's a really good producer as well. I learned a lot from this uh, project. And uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna do some more stuff together. Um, furthermore, yeah, nothing much to tell. Yeah, some pitching going on. Well, if you have any questions uh, about this project, you can just put it in the comments and I'll answer them. So that's basically it. That's how I design a break. Uh, you can check out the new track on our album. It's on Spotify and all the other portals. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have anything to say or questions, like I said before, put them in the comments and make sure to subscribe to my channel. Um, if you wanna be uh, the first to know when a new video is up, you will get a notification. So I'll see you next time. Bye bye.